Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, ain't no more there walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google Boss Talk Podcast 101 and all our platforms will pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, you definitely got to hop over to our YouTube channel. That There you'll see all of our exclusive content. We don't only want you to subscribe. We need that membership because that's where you're going to see the exclusive content. How you find a membership on the, each and every video, including this one in the, in the description section. Go ahead and click that. Follow the instructions. Thank you in advance. Man, hey, man, we got a guy here today, y'all. He really don't need no introduction. This guy right here, man, man, what? Can, how can I start? You know what I'm saying? This guy right here, man, Mad TV, man, it, Comic View? Uh, 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 Def you just did a uh, Def, Def Jam, Jam Def yeah. Jam. Who else? Uh, wait a minute, let me think. Different world. Different world. Man, come on, man. I, I can keep going too because he's been busy here lately Mad as TV, well. Shaq, Mad All Star TV. Comedy Jam. Conan come on, Brian, man. Then listen. Proud family. <laughs> <laughs> I know some. Too. <laughs> oh yeah, see, I, I'm gonna tell you something. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna let her go because I get to going, bro, and I forget she over there, bro. Yeah. I'm not playing. I get uh -oh. too excited, bro. All right. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, man. See, he gets into the career and all that. <laughs> I want to get to know you as a person because that's how I know if I'm gonna like you, depending on what <laughs> your craft. She is. Judging people. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know you were born in Chicago, but you were raised in New York, right? Nah, I'm really from New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. you don't say Chicago at all? You were born there. I, you know, home is where you lay your hat. You know what I mean? Everybody know that, you know, Michael Jordan claims North Carolina, yeah. but he's from New York. Yeah, he's yeah. born in Brooklyn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tupac claimed West Coast, but he also from New York. Mm -hmm. So home is where you lay your hat. Oh, okay. You know, I was born in Chicago, but I left like At two, immediately two, after yeah. I was born. And Do you ever so go I, back and forth though? Yeah, I have, I have family out there. Yeah, because uh, if so, you go you know, like every summer, you know, you enjoy the culture and stuff I, like I, that. I don't, I don't go in terms of family like I used to. When I was okay. a kid, uh, at a young adolescent, my father would take, you know, me and my sister back there because I had my aunts back right. there and some of my cousins and uh, half brothers and sisters. But um, mainly when I go to Chicago now, it's for business, strictly mm. business, you know, out there to perform. What's the difference between the culture of Chicago and New York? Um, You know, I, I haven't spent enough time in Chicago to really understand yeah. what that culture is. Mm. I know, you know, instead of saying soda, they say pop. Yeah. You know, and they pronounce certain words different. Yeah. Uh, but Just like New that, York is <clears throat> crazy because my daughter, she, you know, as I said, she's in Providence, but she has a lot of New Yorkers going to her school. Yeah. And she'd be like, Mom, they say it's mad brick outside. I said, what you is know what I mean, son? <laughs> Dance, yo. Come I'm on, like, fam. I was like, what is, what is mad brick? And she was like, yes, yeah, it's that's, really that's, cold. That's New York vernacular. And I'm like, that's crazy the way how y'all yeah. say stuff. And y'all yeah. are... One thing I've always loved about New York is y'all are very passionate the way how y'all say things and the way how y'all have the hustle mentality. When you go to Manhattan and you go to New York and the way how they yeah. be always trying to hustle you. And it's their job because they're trying to make ends meet. But yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, you know, I think from a cultural standpoint, every uh, ghetto, hood, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, you know, predominantly black area, everybody's a hustler. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just New York is such a fast paced city. Uh, in such a grimy city. But again, right. every hood is grimy. You know what mm. I mean? But New York is just, I, I would think it's just about more about the pacing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? New York is just a fast pace. You gotta constantly be on the move. You're on your toes. Uh, and, you know, so that's what I love about it. You know what I mean? Coming from there. Well, what was it like growing oh, up in New York? You know, I grew up, I'm, I'm an 80s baby. Mm -hmm. you know, I was born in 75. So most of my childhood <clears throat> was, uh, during, you know, in and out of the city. Uh, during the 80s and you know New York is a different place now it, it, it don't have that that je ne sais quoi mm. that it used to have in mm -hmm, terms of you know mm -hmm. uh, danger mm -hmm. uh, you know it used to be a time you go to Times Square yeah. you know they had the, the porno houses the peep houses mm. you know the TVs <laughs> outside showing the previews of the porn really you know uh, Times Square was a dangerous place wow dudes playing three card Monty oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah I know that, that was right. Disneyland yeah. wow. things corporate yeah. Corporations, yeah. It's, it's one of the safest places you could be. So, while that's cool, it, I, from a from a diehard New Yorker's standpoint, it's cool, it's polished, <laughs> but it, it, it ain't 
New York. Like, New York used to be like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But still, home is home. So in the area that you grew up in, um, New York, did it have, like, a lot of gangs and um, violence and stuff like that in that area? Uh, yeah, back, especially in the 80s. In the 80s? Yeah, in the 80s and the 90s. Did uh, you stay out of that, or did you oh, I, I dabble in listen, that? I, I, I grew up poor, mm-hmm. but I didn't grow up, like, in the projects. Okay. You know what I mean? I, but, I, you know, I grew up with mice and roaches and... <clears throat> you know, uh, hand-me-downs and, mm-hmm. and all of that. But, uh, yeah, my mother kept me away from all that nonsense. So mom and dad was in the household together? No, nah, not really. Uh, I was I was primarily raised by my mom. Uh, mm-hmm. She raised me and my sister. And then uh, my dad was in and out. And then towards the later part of my life, when we moved to Jersey, that's when my mother and father finally got married and we all lived together. Oh, how, yeah. did, how, how did you feel as a kid? Did it affect you any much seeing that? Uh, not really. I, you know, uh, my father was always th- like the fun one, mm-hmm. you know, not to say my mother wasn't fun <laughs> because my mother had a great sense of humor. And I think I got a lot of my sense of humor from my mother, but I think it was the combination of both of them. Okay. You know, my father had a deep love for like movies. Mm-hmm. So that's where my love for cinema and mm-hmm. TV came from was, was from my dad. So he would always scoop me and my sister up on the weekends and take us to the theater um, and, you know, we watched a lot of TV, so, you know, I, I, I love both, uh, yeah. uh, but, yeah, no, it didn't affect me in, in, a, in a negative way. Yeah, because it's good to have an active father, in, especially <clears throat> in a young boy's life growing up. Yeah, I mean, listen, because my father wasn't necessarily there the way he sh- probably should have been right. or would have liked to have been. So he tried to make up for that as much as he could. Once with, he see you. When he, when he did see us, it was fun time. <laughs> you know, movies, Disneyland, Great Adventure, right. buying stuff, you know. So, yeah, I, 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 I dug that. Wow. Um, the thing that, um, I, when I looked you up, 14 years old, it said you started comedy. How in the hell do you start at 14? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to figure out how, is you got some grown up letting you get on the stage or are you sneaking <clears throat> into the club? Do you got a fake ID and a beard? No, what my, the hell? Mother, <laughs> my mother, my mother would escort me to the clubs. But okay. You know, it, it, and you know, whenever people tell the story of Deaf Comedy Jam, which obviously was a huge comedy staple uh, for, for black folks and gave so many people like me and Bill Bellamy and everybody that you've seen today, their official start. Uh, I know they give the credit to Stan Lathan and Russell Simmons, but yeah. the real brain power behind um, Def Comedy Jam was a brother named Bob Sumner. Okay. Who from out of Jersey. Like he knew me and Bill and a lot of the cats in the tri state area, and it was really his idea. And he took it to Stan Lathan and took it to Russell, and then they put their they name on it and stamped it, which made it official which allow us to get, you know, to HBO. Wow, you know, and, and the thing, I, just starting out early like you did, man, um, a lot of doors start to open up for you early too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like when you look back at, and and you was, like now, when you, you really, I, it's something you said when you was talking about the Cat Williams thing, we're going to get into that later, but it's just the fact of being a legend or being somebody that people predominantly, the GOAT, like the years and stuff that you put in, is a long run, like to be who you are now and still be here because a lot of them ain't here no more. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, if I'm going to brag on anything, uh, that's probably my biggest sticking point is the longevity factor. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this now officially 33 years, so come April of this year, it'll be 34. Uh, and it's the staying power. You know, yeah. dudes come and go, you know, but it's about the longevity. If you if you can, the longer you stick around, the longer you, you remain relevant, um, Especially, you know, look, man, I, I, I ain't been in a huge movie since Jerry Maguire. And I yeah. was like 99, yeah. uh, 98, 99. So it's been over 20 years, you know what I mean? And, and, and I haven't been on TV since Mad TV. You know, I've done little appearances here and there. But as far as anything major or consistent, I haven't been in that public eye like that. And yet, you know, let other people tell it, I'm still one of the most relevant, respected cats in the game. So, uh that's a testament to my staying power and my material and, and uh, you know, some of these interviews that I do where people can understand. I try to be as authentic as I can, uh, even if I go against the grain of what's popular yeah. in people's opinions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just do me, man. I but what's stopping it. you from being in those films? Blackball. Like they bought, they blackballed him. Yeah, let's just get bit, it out yeah, there. Yeah, oh, yeah, they hating yeah, on my boy yeah. now. And I'm over here with him because I really hadn't researched him because I hadn't had the chance to interview him. But now that I have... 
I think I know my stuff. I think so I got black this. So blackball is so real because you hear a lot of actors. A lot of actors talk about I've been blackballed, but it's, it's something going on. They still get work, but just not the same type of work they used yeah, to. Yeah, and I mean, listen, uh, the climate has changed a little bit. You know, now through social media and the power of your phone and mm -hmm. certain platforms, you can still be like a rose in the concrete. You can still find a way to get yeah. in. To be. Yeah, so whatever it is. Uh, as you know, in this business, you're always one something away uh, from breaking through, whether it's a commercial, a TV show, a movie, mm -hmm. something that goes viral, you know, whereas, you know, back in the 80s and the 90s, all you had was the platform of television right. or a movie. Right. And if you couldn't get through with one of those, mm -hmm. then, you know, you had a fight up on your hands. But mm -hmm. now with all these different avenues, you know, you can sneak your way in there. And at the end of the day, money talks, mm -hmm. you know. So once you show that you can produce revenue, mm -hmm. all that other shit go out the window. So when you think about, like, even Taraji, because, you know, the other day we were talking about, you know, the color purple. She did the color purple, but she came out on um, on that interview and was talking about the pay for black females and how she's been underpaid and how she felt and so forth. Um, what And you've been in the industry somewhat. What do you feel about what she said? You know, that was part of my thing that I tied into the Kevin, uh, the Cat mm -hmm. Williams situation. You know, and listen, I, I, I mean, I know you want to jump into that. No, but let's just, just go and get, do what you do, man. <laughs> you know, you know this, is, this, is a, this is a thing where I, when I first seen it, I mean, he, did, he, he slid across the board on everybody. He didn't leave nobody out when he was talking about people that he had done, evidently had some type of encounter with over the years, you right. know? So I, I felt like, okay, when he got it off, I, I already know how he is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I know the, I, but he don't talk a lot. He ain't just getting on no big platforms or doing podcasts. So when it hit, I didn't expect to do what he did. But that thing went crazy, man. Yeah, you know, listen, and I'm 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 catching flack for it like a motherfucker on my page. You know, yeah. it's like I'm 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 Scarface at the end of the movie where I'm on the balcony <laughs> with a thousand Colombians kind of trying to shoot at me. You know what I mean? But I I, I stand on what I said and and. You know, I, I know, I feel like, honestly, part of the reason why people are upset or, or there's the backlash is because they see themselves in that mirror that I'm pointing in a direction. Yeah. You know, my original point was, you know, listen, there's a reason why the saying exists within the black community, crabs in a barrel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and slavery has done such a number on us that, you know, rather than just come together the way that we should for the betterment of us, this is what we do. We love drama. We love gossip. We love this bullshit. And my whole point was, and still is, this is a news cycle. Mm -hmm. And when people say things like protect cat at all costs, and he's the goat, and I, and I said on my post, everybody is the goat to their fan base. And I'm not gonna dilute him being your goat. If that's your goat, I applaud it. He's a talented motherfucker. He's one of the best in the game. So I can understand that subjective Feeling, but you said Richard Pryor is the goat. Right? He's the goat. But goat talk aside, my thing was when you go protect him at all costs. Mm. Let's have some perspective. He didn't turn the world on his access. He's not curing cancer. He's not curing AIDS. He's not solving racism. He's not solving black poverty. So when you say protect him, what are we? What are you protecting him about? And you go, well, he told his truth. All right, but how did his truth help you? Mm -hmm. How did his truth change your life? How did his truth change anything? All those people he talked about, they still gonna get their bread. They still gonna have their fan base. They still gonna work. People still gonna respect them and adore them. What was the purpose of that? My thing is this, why not use that mouthpiece and that platform and that energy for the betterment of us? So now you got beef with all these people, you've given them reasons to not like you over what? A, who stole the joke? And I was telling my man that drove me down here, what, what, what a lot of people don't know is Cat's a hypocrite because Cat done stole jokes. Mm -hmm. One of his most popular jokes on one of his specials, he took from JB Smooth. Mm. So everybody's stolen jokes. Right. But again, finger pointing and talking shit, how does that help us? Now, when you look at Taraji P. Henson and you go, and she's not the only one that's complained, Viola Davis. Monique. Monique, her... Look at all our black actresses, Gabrielle Union, Regina Hall. Mm -hmm. They all face that problem. So why not go, instead of beefing Kevin Cat, 
Let's do a movie together. Mm -hmm. Let's hire those black actresses. Let us and the black community and black Hollywood come together and form like Voltron so that we can do what white folks do without needing white folks. You know, it's like, why do we have to uh, wait for them to give us our flowers on their Oscars or, or their Emmys or their Golden Globes? Where's our own award shows? We've been too separated for too long. And this is what we talk about? Yeah, but, not, news cycle. Not, but because she stepped out and said what she said, 50 Cent reached out to her and wanted to work with her and trying to help her to get that bag, a bigger bag than what she's ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Because he even said, you know, because I think people thought that he was joking around when he said what he said. He came back and said, look at what I got for Mary J from Stars because of me. I can do that for her. Yeah. Okay, but... Why are we waiting for her to come to tears? We should have been done this. You know, they, that, that studio called DreamWorks mm -hmm. that's made up of uh, David Geffen, uh, uh, Eisenberg, and Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Where is our DreamWorks? Yeah, we got Tyler Perry, but that's all we got. That's all we got. We got, we got billionaires. We got Oprah. We got Jay-Z. We got Michael Jordan. Robert we, Smith. We got Magic Johnson. Robert Smith. When are we going to come together so that we can build our own empire to amass our own wealth and then take that money and funnel it back into our communities so that we could be like Tulsa, Oklahoma again before the massacre and the riots and the murders. That's true. Why, wait, why are we focused on a, a, a gossip high school type beef over jokes when we got black women in our industry crying about unfair treatment and pay? But, what are we doing? But you can't... I got to be the devil's advocate because you've had beefs or different situations with different people that you've said this or that about, whether it be whoever, Faison, all y'all back and right. forth, all y'all have done. You and Mike, I seen the thing where you was just joking and y'all had a little joking back and forth, you know, dear. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that's the way, I, looking from the outside, looking in, it's like all of y'all are comedians and y'all have all had y'all day, you know, where y'all went back and forth with each other. He just came out and just slid across everything that he ever thought he had an issue with. Okay, but what did it change? How did it move the needle? How did it move us forward? And and, and, and if people really paid attention to my post, I said in the post, yes, I'm guilty of doing the same thing, yeah. but I'm also 45. I'm tired of being a 45 year old, 15 year old. Yeah. At what point do we grow up? Grow up. That's real. But what you saying agree. that, but what you saying that, I look at um, a different perspective of it. Um, I hear a lot of people say the reason why I do stand up comic, yes, it's also to make people laugh, but it's also it's my cheaper way of having therapy. Instead of going to a therapist, I come out here and tell all my business, all the everything that I go through and, and laugh about it. I get it off my chest. That's what rappers do. They put in their music and just let it out. So in my mind, he's been holding all of this for so long, so when he came on, it didn't benefit nobody, but for him letting it go to the world, maybe that helped him mentally. I don't buy that for one bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't buy that for one bit. I was looking at it from the other end. This sounds be good, though. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, <laughs> listen, we all have egos. We're entertainers, and entertainers have egos. Mm -hmm. You have to have a little bit of an ego mm -hmm. to make it in this business, because there's a certain amount of belief you absolutely have to have within yourself, because this business is designed to strip you of your your, your confidence mm -hmm. and your and felt in, in your worth. So in order to fight that, yeah, you gotta be a little arrogant, but but I believe most of that is ego driven. Mm -hmm. Most of that is ego driven, mm -hmm. you know? But it, with the, okay, you've been in comedy, you've been in doing this for some, for a lot of years and you've seen the way how internet and everything has changed and people have become more vocal than what they used to be because of the internet, because they can get it out there to the masses really quick. Is that, I know there's some disadvantages of that, but what are the benefits of that? You know, I always say, and I think I also said it in my post, this internet thing, it's a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. Because listen, we all are guilty of scrolling through our phones for entertainment purposes mainly. And listen, I ain't gonna lie, I've scrolled across some things that make me laugh hard as hell by, by just some regular Joe. Right. But at the same time, it gives everybody a voice now. Mm -hmm. And everybody don't deserve to be heard. Because most people don't have nothing to say. Most people are trying to be comedians and they stink. 
Mm-hmm. It's only a small percentage of people that really are true intellectuals, are truly funny, truly gifted. It's like, I look at it like, let me put it in this analogy. Remember, I don't know how old you are. I'm 48. I'm very close I'm, to I'm, you. I'm a, I'm a little older than you. Okay, uh, yeah, so you, you're, you're young, but uh, I, I, I'm going to talk to you about New York because I want to get all into the Well, then the you better know this reference. I'm trying to get <laughs> you better know this reference. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Go uh, ahead. Studio 54. Remember Studio 54? Yeah, yeah, yeah wait a minute. In, in the listen. 70s, in, in early 80s, it was the hottest nightclub on the planet. Yeah, yeah. But the line to get in was ridiculous, and everybody couldn't get in. Right. There were certain rules. You had to look a certain way. You were handpicked. Everybody don't deserve to get into Studio 54. A la, everybody don't deserve to be heard, because most of it is nonsense and garbage. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, with the phone thing, and 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 and. and like the saying in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, exactly. So when you got a bunch of people looking at these messages on, on the phones from people just yammering, people aren't smart enough to know, don't believe that. That's and then now really. we're starting to spread this message of bullshit. Like, for instance, like there were people going, yo, and you know, with the phone, you could edit, put music, make it dramatic. Pray for Kevin Hart. Pray for Kevin Hart. His fan base is turning on him because a cat. Really? Mm-mm. Kevin Hart can sell out any arena mm-hmm. in, on the planet. 80,000. You think Kevin needs your fucking prayers? Kevin's going to be just fine. Cat didn't shake up the world like y'all trying to say. <laughs> Everybody going to be fine. Steve going to still be a millionaire. Chris Tucker going to still be a millionaire. Ricky they Smiley. all going to work. They all going to still be in movies. They all going to still sell out shows. I'm still going to get my paper. I'm still going to work. Stop the bullshit. That's what I'm saying. This was a waste of time. What did it do? You really think Cat stopping Kevin's bread? Nigga, please. But you have some people like Mike Epps who say, Kevin, I mean, Kat, you should have talked about me. Talk about me in positive, negative, I don't care. Just talk just about me. He's he being funny. He's just being but, funny. And, yeah, he's being funny. And he's going to be all right. <laughs> Mike is one of the most working motherfuckers in the game. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, dude, I, I'm just sitting here going, when people go, he needed to stand on his truth. We needed to hear the truth. If Martin Luther King was still alive, or Malcolm X was still alive, or Mega Evers was still alive, and they had something to say to release truth, that would be beneficial to us. Because look at the source. You talking about a comedian over jokes. You know how silly this is? He say that the reason that the Steve Harvey thing came up, I think I seen an old clip of D.C. Curry where he talked about Steve uh, allegedly that Steve pretty much seen his kids and him at the mall early on before that Detroit thing happened. Right. And that's what stimulated the, the beef thing between them where he wouldn't take pictures with 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 Cat's kids. So he see him when he's young, you know, he's not right. who he is today. Right. And he felt like, bam, like, dang man, you know, he didn't do me right, so I got this chip on my shoulder. And, and that's how uh, that okay. started. Uh, okay, but listen, listen, nobody owes you anything. Nobody has to do anything. I'm a Michael Jordan fanatic. I know that. And I'm, I'm, I've always said I'm scared to meet the motherfucker because if he ever shit on me, I'm going to say something I don't mean. <laughs> That's why LeBron is better than you. Uh, oh, that you know, going to hurt the hell out of you the way you I don't mean him. that, but, but, uh. but I'm going, that's why they say you, you be careful. You don't want to meet your heroes. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times you may be disappointed. And what's so funny is I've had people tell me, yeah, man, I met... This person, this person, dudes that are 10 times bigger than me. And they were like, man, they were such dicks. They mm-hmm. shit on me. They, they didn't acknowledge me, made me feel this small. If, if anybody that knows anything about me, I am the most non-Hollywood nigga on the planet. As long as you approach me with respect, dude, I'll chop it up with you, shake your hand, give you a hug. We could talk. I'm the most you know approachable dude in the world. That's non Hollywood. As long as you hit me with respect. No, and and I, I could see that. That's why I told you I had never researched you like I did through when I after me and you after I text you. It was like I got to check him out. Then when I did, I'm like, man, this nigga here yeah, really. I looked at the Vlad interviews. I like really you counseling Vlad Vlad, <laughs> Vlad over there a lot on <laughs> on, on black culture. Right. I, you know, I'm I'm looking from a different perspective, yeah. and I'm like, damn, he the only one I kind of see do his yeah. interview where. I, he ain't just gonna let a nigga make it. He gonna educate you on this matter. Yeah, listen, I don't ever claim to be the smartest person in the room, but what I know, I think I know. Uh, so, you know, within the conversation, uh, I, I'm not gonna uh, sidestep or not say what I believe to be true. 
Yeah. Uh, and if I'm wrong and you educate me, I'm I'm with that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, and, I love seeing. Like I said, I was. I don't even watch watch Vlad like that. And definitely shout out to him because he's been in this game. Like, right. I don't been in two years, but I'm just saying to see how you and you and him handled the the chemistry. That was probably one of my better. I don't watch him like that. So I'm like, damn. Well, you know, the funny thing that the, the funny thing that's, that always sticks out to me is. You know, I got a lot of black people who be like, man, stay off Vlad platform. I hear him saying He's that. He's a culture vulture. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, first of all, you keep saying to me, man, I hate that nigga. Every time I watch, I hate that nigga. Every time I watch, I hate that nigga. Let's rewind the tape. Every time I watch, I hate the nigga. So if you hate him, why is every time you watch, you're watching? So he knows what to do to keep you engaged. Yeah. That's just called, you know, Smart yeah. business. Yeah. And, and listen, and I also go, I, it ain't like I'm on there for free. He pays me. Correct. He pays me a nice five figures. Yeah. So if my choice is either stay home on a Tuesday and do nothing and earn nothing or go sit down for an hour and a half and walk away with five figures where I could not make anything, what, what am I going to do? No, I agree. I'm gonna make the money and I get to check them. No, I see so, it. So I, I see it. That's a win-win to me. I'm enjoying it. When I see it, I'm like, okay, I see what's going on now. Yeah. Like you and your passion probably gonna get you in trouble all the time because you, when you speak, the tonality and the way you deliver. Let me oh, say, listen, man. My, hey, my, my mouth, my <laughs> mouth is. Uh, it's my greatest asset and my biggest detriment. <laughs> this, this help. This gets me money and loses me money. I see it. I'm telling you when I look, I said, damn, what he say, it be profound. Like it, yeah, it yeah. really it hit different. So when, yeah. when I'm seeing him take these blows, it's like I hope he don't get upset because he really giving no, it to and, us. And, and, and I know, know that's not his thing. He's and, professional. And, and, I, and I even said to people, uh I, I finally said one time on the show, I said, guys, I'm reading the comments. And y'all always go, Well, this last time Vlad gonna have him on. Man, I know Vlad ain't gonna bring him back <laughs> with what he's saying. And I'm going, you guys, Vlad is not that fragile. Number yeah. one, and he's a smart businessman. Mm -hmm. He knows with me and him, the it's back. like Ali and Cosell. Yeah, he knows the chemistry pops, the arguments. It's great TV. It's damn good. It TV. would be stupid for him not to bring me back. Damn good TV. Yeah, I he knows there. what he's doing. I sit there and watch. I'll be like, this is good stuff, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, man, you told me about all that. I see what you said. I'm a show. I'm a showman. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm, I'm on about the, Ali and, 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 yeah. and like you being on the camera and and, yeah. and you challenge him to get on the camera. You like he like I bet, but not like that. It take a chem people don't realize how much chemistry it take to get on camera yeah. and really hold the audience let me, attention. Let me, let me man. tell you something, man. And and, and I said this before, like you know, uh, especially before the pandemic when it was like mandatory for comics to come to town, get up early, go do radio. And I've had so many radio DJs tell me. Dude, there's so many comedians we have in here where it's like they great on stage because that's their thing. Mm -hmm. But when they get in here, it's that's the truth. It's, and I go, listen, man. Every comic don't know how to translate. You, just because you a comic, don't mean you can translate your funny from stage to radio. This is a different thing here. It's really? a different medium, but it all is under the umbrella of entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like the greatest comedians should be able to do it all. Mm. TV, film, radio, stand-up, voiceover. If you funny, you funny. That should translate no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, when I do Vlad and I read the comments, that's one of the things people say all the time. They go, yo, y'all's chemistry, man. It's crazy. And you read all your comments? I, I try to not read all of them, but <laughs> I, I, I do because to me it's like being in sports. I got to look at game tape. Okay. You know I mean, I got I to gotta know what people are saying right. so I can look at the tape and go, okay, next time do this instead do th of that. That's right. Say this and don't say that. That's right. So, And certain points, you know, because with Vlad, how he got his camera set up, you know, if my interview is here and I got a camera that's here, even though I know I'm here, I turn and I play into I that camera. I've seen you do that. I've seen you do it. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 like, and a lot of dudes don't know. That's an entertainer too. That's an entertainer because whenever saying. you're on stage, you got to work the stage because you have people not only in front of you but over here. Because I hate when I sit on the side right. and all you do is pay attention to here. You don't ever look it, this it's way. It's the stage. Right. It's, it's it's complete. That's what I'm saying. It's certain jokes and certain things I say. If I turn and look directly in that camera after I say it, that's the punchline. Exactly. That's the joke. Exactly. That's what makes people go, 
Oh, this nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to know all of that. So it's like, yeah, man, it's it's look at game tape, man. Yeah. So I that's that's in one on one. Y'all need to learn this. Hey man, listen, DMX, man, I seen you had did RIP to DMX, but yeah, I seen you did that skit long time ago uh-huh. on that show with him, man. Like that was a I, I didn't know that. And when I seen it, I'm like, damn, he, he he so and back then I'm gonna bring the dress thing up and all that. Yeah. Like you was early on that. Like, do you think that this big facade where when you put this dress on, like we just had Brandon T. Jackson on here. He was yeah. saying after he wore the dress, he felt like, you know, like, damn, like he, because of his belief system, that wasn't a thing for him. But you, but as you've done on, it he figured over that out. and over again. And, and we'll do it again. Too. Because let me tell you something. That stigma, I don't buy into that. First of all, men in drag has always been a comedy staple. And, and, and it's funny because this is when you read some of the comments and you see where people aren't educated. Because one of the talking points that black people bring up is, it's emasculate black men. You don't see white men doing that. Are you out of your mind? They wear kilts. Uh, no, no, but forget the kilts. Dustin Hoffman in Tootsie. Mm. Robin Williams in Mrs. Was, Doubtfire. Exactly. Uh, Tom Hanks in Bosom Buddies. White guy, Milton Berle. It's just been a comedy staple, period. And then again, I use two words, balance and perspective. When you look at the landscape of all our leading black men in Hollywood, and first of all, men in drag has always been a comedic thing. That's why you don't see dramatic actors do it. But before we get to that, let's look at the actors. Anywhere from Denzel to Don Cheadle to Sam Jackson, Morgan Freeman, uh, Ving Rhames, Eddie Murphy, I could go on and on and on, Mm -hmm. Wesley Snipes. They play far more roles not in a dress than they do in a dress. And in terms of Positive black male imagery. We've played everything from superheroes to lawyers to doctors to judges, politicians, cops, loving fathers, devoted husbands. So in terms of balance and perspective, as long as the scales weigh heavily in favor of positive Positive imagery of black men not in dresses, Mm -hmm. then you can have a little bit of that. And a little bit of that is comedic. And then I say, be honest with yourself. You mean to tell me that Eddie Murphy, one of the most iconic comedians in comedy who we all love and respect, if he decided to do stand-up again because of uh, uh, the Nutty Professor and Norbit Rasputitz, you've lost respect for Eddie Murphy. He's no longer an icon and a legend in our eyes. You won't go see any of his movies. Jamie Foxx, triple threat, actor, singer, comedian. You loved him when he was Wanda and in Living Color. Right. He won an Oscar. So you telling me now we don't respect Jamie Foxx? If Jamie come to your city to do stand-up, you're not coming to see him perform? No. You're not supporting his movies? Let's go down the list. Marlon and Sean Wayans, Martin Lawrence. The Martin Show, my end, was a beloved staple in the black community. So was you knocking him when he was doing Shanae? Was you knocking him when he was doing Mama Payne? Did you not support him when he did the three Big Mama movies? Uh, you know, again, Kevin Hart, Richard Pryor, who is the GOAT. Mm-hmm. His legend is tainted because he played a maid in the toy. Flip Wilson as Geraldine. Back in the 70s, when blacks weren't really on TV like that, he was considered an icon and legend because it was the first black man with his own show. And he created an iconic character in Geraldine. So now we don't respect Flip Wilson. We're going to put an asterisk in his name in the history books. You're lying. So Stop lying. When, when, like, come on, man. Was he the first? When, 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 was when he you, the first? To have his own show? No, to, um, who was the first black man to put on a dress? I want to say him as Geraldine. Okay. Yeah. But I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, but certainly he was the first guy with his own variety show mm-hmm. that helped a lot, where he put Richard Pryor on and help other black people get on. So that's what I'm just saying. This whole black men in a dress is to demean. I, I never bought into that. What because was- the black men that we have or have had in cinema have given us every reason to not feel demeaned. And that's why I'm saying the men in dresses have only been strictly for comedy. Mm-hmm. And those scales are, are lean one way heavily than they do the other way. So let's have some perspective and keep some balance. Come on, man. Did you, uh, okay, when was the first time that you put a dress on? Was it on Mad TV or was it before that? And, uh, and, probably and Mad you, TV for and, the DMX kit. And yeah. when you did it, was it any second thought about it? No! Is you like, this just coming? I am secure in who the fuck I am. I'm the most pussy getting this motherfucker on the planet, whether I get it for free or pay for it outright. 
I don't got on I don't that shit don't mean nothing to me. I have so many dudes hitting me up in my in my Instagram, uh, either calling me a faggot or gay or calling me a sellout. That shit don't mean nothing to me. Because I'm secure in who I am. I know who I am. I take care of my fam. I make sure my kids straight. You know, my, my, my woman ain't complaining about nothing. I, you know, I live a great life. I do what I do. I answer to nobody. I'm my own boss. You know, I got millions. I don't give a fuck. But that one, okay, so we're in a dress, but then I, with researching you, I came across a video where you were doing, it almost looked like a music video, but yeah, I it was a, it's a, It was a spoof. Yeah, uh, and, for, and my, for my Showtime special called Hollywood, look, I'm smiling. And at the end of it, I did a skit, because we all know there's, you know, even before Lil Nas X, mm -hmm. we all know there's been homosexuality right. in hip hop. So I created a character named Big Bugger Boogaloo, who was a gay rapper. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I said, uh, well, dude, I had a dude massage my back, and I said, and when I say my man, he really my man. Right. And I gave him a pet. Yeah, everybody is hitting me up on my Instagram, showing me that skit. Nigga, what's up with this? Right. What's up with it? Yeah, it was a skit. It was comedic. It's art. So, you know, but that's just, the black community has always been ultra homophobic. Mm -hmm. You know, I do a joke where I talk about getting a prostate exam. And I'm telling you immediately, I, I look in the crowd and, and uh, the brothers. <laughs> and in the joke, I say, uh, black man, we've always had a stigma about doctors and hospitals. You know, uh, we won't get, we won't get a prostate exam because the idea of a man sticking a, his finger in your ass mm -hmm. is, is homophobic. Because of homosexuality, and I'm going, it's a fucking exam for your health. Mm -hmm. Get the goddamn procedure. And a lot of y'all would rather die because you don't want to be associated with anything gay. How fucking stupid is that? You, 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 you are going to ignore your health because you are homophobic. And then I later in the joke go, uh, you know, it's funny when I tell that joke, I can look in the crowd and I can see a lot of brothers like this. Y'all want to laugh, tense. but you're fighting it. Right. White guys don't have a problem laughing at that because white boys mm -hmm. play gay games with each other all the time. So even when I address the elephant in the room, that gets the laugh because the truth is in the details. I know why y'all niggas not laughing. The joke is funny, but the mere idea of you laughing at it, you think makes you gay. How stupid is that? But I gotta ask this part with that because I know you did that skit, but how far would you take it in a movie role? If somebody came up to you and said, okay, I have a movie role, I need you to play this gay actor, and you're gonna be in bed with this other that's man. That's why I would probably draw the line. That's what I'm trying to see, yeah, how far you know what would mean? you? Cause, cause, cause that, you know, to me, yeah, that's another boundary, you know what I mean? Right. And, and maybe, listen, I, to an extent, that's where maybe my homophobia kicks in. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, for the skit, for a comedy moment that lasted a second, a little mwah, that's, you know, right. that was that. Mm -hmm. But anything in terms of being graphic with it or really getting deep in it, yeah, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing okay. that. Okay. I want to take you back to Mad TV for a second. Like, when you were doing the, those episodes, did yeah. you feel the uh, competitiveness uh with SNL? Did you even feel that? Or you nah. were just focused on the, you know what I mean? Because everybody from the outside looking in, yeah. they were like, this is a uh, You know, listen, uh, the younger generation, like I'll have people come up to me at my shows and go, man, I grew up on you, which makes me feel old. But <laughs> <laughs> that means when they were kids, we were their show. Their parents belonged to SNL. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, no matter how many people said, and even people that watch SNL would go, man, y'all are so much funnier than them. Yeah, but you know what? The reality is SNL is the NFL, and we're the CFL. Mm -hmm. You can't compete with the big boys. You know, they, they was the bully on the block. You know, they, they were so big. If they did a skit and they wanted to mock a McDonald's, like a, do a, a skit about McDonald's, mm -hmm. they actually had the means to use McDonald's the logo, mm. the arch, right. they could say McDonald's. Wow. We would have to go, Nick Donald's. <laughs> <laughs> we have to use an N. Right. You know, so, so they, McDonald's. You know, yeah, or some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, so they're, they're, as much as we enjoyed the compliment, and we knew we were funny at them for mm -hmm. like a good six year stretch, we were beating them in terms of like, you know, Emmy noms and all that. But they, that's, that's. For I'm you curious. to even say that, that that's big yeah. for you to even say that though. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, I, when I, and I'm just staying on no, that for ahead. a second. 198 episodes? 
Yeah. Is it what they're saying that you appeared in? Mm-hmm. You played a major part in that. Like when people look back in history and they look at that, it'll never it ain't gonna just go away. And I can't believe that you hadn't been in more stuff. And Living Color, was that in the midst of that or after that? We were after that. Yeah, I was yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. this all this stuff is, you know what I mean? These yeah. are these are things where really I feel like you 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 test in the water a lot of times, like doing things that had yeah. never been done before, right? Yeah. I mean, well, and also, you know, that golden era of the 90s before mm-hmm. all this wokeness and political correctness and this moisture age we live in, we could get away with all. We got away with shit that we you couldn't get away with today. Mm-hmm. That's right. You just couldn't get away with mm-hmm. today. So we, you know, we were like uncut cocaine. We was pure. Hadn't been stepped on, mixed, nothing. Now, today, everything is diluted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, okay, so I, when I was doing another research, I know that you are, I want to say, almost the king at um, imitating other people's voices and stuff like that. Um, out of all the people that you do, who was the most difficult for you to really try to imitate? You know, for a long time, and I've always been a huge fan, still am to this day, of uh, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Sopranos. Mm. So I would always watch and I would want to do a James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano, and I could never get it. But then one day I was watching this dude who was on America's Got Talent and he was constantly posting uh, him either doing Pauly Gaultieri from mm-hmm. The Sopranos or James Gandolfini. And I'm watching and one day I got it. I just I honed in to what he was doing. And when I caught the note, I ended up doing it. And after practicing, practicing it for a little bit, I ended up doing it better than him. You know, I want to wow. hear it. I want to hear wow. it. You know, when he talks, uh, I'm talking about my sister Jadish. I'm going to do the Shack. So I was, you know, it's the ish. So when I would hear the ish, I started just practicing the ish. And next thing you know, it's like, you know, all the guys are going down to the bottom bank with the ish. <laughs> to get the fuck about I got with the good gravy and the money and the bosh. So I said, and then once I, I just it. It and, that, and that made me get it. So yeah, oh, I, wow. I was proud to get that one because I was such a fan and I wanted to do it. How long did it take you to get it? Uh, about a couple of weeks. Oh, really? Of just and that was the longest. He good. He good. Yeah, he good. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. He good. So you get them like that when Do you that, try. The Jay Z yeah, one. I, I, I was say like. that uh, impressions is like people that have an ear for music. You know, okay. Tone, inflection, uh, rhythm, cadence, and everybody's voice is a note. So like you know you think about Shaq. Shaq is breathy and bassy. Mm. That's like I score twenty eight ten. I'm a dominate. If I score twenty eight ten, that's barbecue chicken. Inside, outside, you guys go to an airtime. You know, did the yeah. eyes and everything. Yeah. So Shaq is real, you know, it's Hover Jay Z, hey, bite, no. <laughs> Hover's, you know, that register, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just honing in on people's tones and inflections. But accent, so can you do a Jamaican accent, like a true oh, Jamaican, Jamaican accent? My Jamaican accent is terrible. <laughs> is she terrible? But like, true Jamaican accent. Uh, who do I want the mango down there? No. <laughs> but you know, my, you know what? To, to somebody who's not a true Jamaican, right. that sounds authentic it sounds as fuck. Right. But to a real Jamaican, <laughs> they know. They know. That's how she yeah, yeah. the movie. When we watch movies, she say, he's not Jamaican. I'm you like, know, I'm going to tell you something, which is so funny. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but if you've never seen it, watch it and you'll know what I mean. Which one? Now, Denzel Washington is one of our greatest actors uh-huh. of all time. Did you ever see The Mighty Quinn? Long time ago, it was years. Man, I haven't watched that in a while. That. And this is why I have such a respect, and you have to have such a respect for certain aspects of the game. Because mm-hmm. when I say everything don't translate, translate, like Denzel is one of the greatest actors of all time. I can name a lot of great actors, but doing an accent is one of the hardest, hardest things thing. to do. And you would think as great as an actor as Denzel is, he could pull that off. His Jamaican accent is so terrible. At one point in certain scenes, his attempt to do a Jamaican accent sounds like an attempt, and he just bleeds right into losing it. But I, most I, of them are terrible. Most actors, when they do Jamaican accents, are terrible. The ones that I find that are really, really good, I have to research, and they usually always have like a mother who is Jamaican or somebody, right. you know, so they've been already talking like that. Right. I noticed they put a lot of emphasis on man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The man go downstairs, man. You know, but yeah. Denzel was like, what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it would start out horrible and then turn American. You got to see it. I mean, I it's got, just bad. I got to watch it again. I really and I love attention. me some Denzel like everybody else, and he is one of the greatest actors of all time. Yes, My favorite. Is. But I was like, 
damn, they didn't hire a dialect coach mm-hmm. or somebody that could pull them to the side because yeah. it's terrible. It's very bad. Because what's her name just got an Oscar the other day Ooh. too um, for the first time. Oh my God. What's black actress, name of the best black actress. You Angela Bassett. Just yeah. got her first Oscar. I saw it the other was day. That, was that the Oscar? Was that a first one? Was it an Oscar or was it Grant? No, it was an Oscar. But right, yeah. Who was the Oscars on? I, that's what I was wondering, but I saw it posted the other day really? that she just yeah, I, yeah, got I her. It too. You yeah, saw yeah, it, yeah. and then she got but her first. But it wasn't like during. I didn't see it on TV. I didn't see it. I saw it on social media. Yeah, it was like you they, gotta be uh, careful. They slid her a secret award. <laughs> and I'm like, dang. Yeah. Is, is Eddie Murphy still? Have he still never gotten nothing, no, nothing from no, them? No. no. And Why, that's terrible. I, I, something you said earlier was so riveting. In the fact of we can't wait on people to honor us, bro. That's what I'm saying. We can't. That's why again, my thing with the cat. Okay, he stood in his truth. I'm all right, but why not use that energy for something greater instead of this? A news cycle, gossip, bullshit. Did he run a four point three? Uh, they said he. They said he did. <laughs> and they showed the time when he ran it. You say, saw that. Right. Say that he ran right through that. Hey, I don't know. Do you believe it? <laughs> Do you believe you it? You know when Cat went. Uh, I've never done a drug in my life. <laughs> I've, you know, I've never been. N- nigga, you've done drugs. <laughs> Some of the shit he's done, we don't do that. We calm you down. You fighting 14 year olds, nigga. Stop it. <laughs> 19 arrests, but never no convictions. So, what are we celebrating, nigga? Is that a brag? I've been arrested 19 times, but never no convictions. But you were arrested 19 times. What are you bragging about? Damn. LeBron James, I've been to the finals a gazillion times, only four championships. What are you bragging about? I know that might not be the best analogy, because the positive <laughs> thing is he won the championship. Yeah, but you be giving LeBron hell. Well, bro. I don't want to. I just, a lot of people love LeBron now. But he's Absolutely. a Mike, I'm a Michael Jordan fan, so I'm not going to even go I'm there a with Shaq you. Fan. I didn't like Michael Jackson well, back Michael then. Michael Jordan. Bro. Michael Jordan, sorry. Michael yeah. Jordan, I did not. I was always rooting for everybody was Michael Jordan. I'm. Opposite. Malone. That's no, right. Shaq. Shaq and Kobe was my team. They, wasn't even, my old enough to, they right. wasn't even old enough to do nothing back then. We all, I'm old. But Larry I Bird. I used to love Larry oh, Bird. Larry cool, but Larry, uh, now you say Isaiah Thomas or something, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Them boys worked hard, but he kept knocking them out the way. He, they couldn't get in. <laughs> Mailman, Malone, he, 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 them boys have no, nightmares but, right now. Michael, about, Jordan, Michael is, Jordan There was and is very talented. Well, he I'm going to give the that. Goat was. But, I, I don't like going there because I know who the GOAT was. Just yeah. like I don't like and the Cowboys. Yeah. I'm not a Cowboys fan because You're everybody no because <laughs> yeah. they're so called America's team but they haven't won a, a Super Bowl in how how long? But everywhere I take you, don't you see the jersey? Don't you see the people? The yeah. reaction is great. You see it all over America. Yeah. You got to acknowledge it. He sees it everywhere he go. Th- yeah, even in Kansas, even though they win, you gonna have a couple of old uh, jerseys like my Dal- Dallas is like the Lakers. You know, that's it, right. It's just a franchise <laughs> that is adored heavily and hated heavily. Yeah. So you they're know. the best brand. Brand wise, they are the best brand yeah. ever. Yeah, but the one thing I can say, man, when you see like like you see Cat Williams, and he's the type of guy that he gonna come back from this. Kevin's gonna come back from this. I agree with you. 100%. But there's nothing to come back. No, I mean, from. far as far as with the with the internet, the internet is right in your face. So yeah, uh, but, but again, we have this is why I go. We have to be careful with this because the message that is sent out is that somehow they need to come back. They took an L. Cat damaged their careers. That is ridiculous. Nobody needs to come back from anything. Nobody really even needs to respond to anything. <laughs> They're going to still be the millionaires they are. They are. And while all the people that are like, ooh and I are worried about what's going on with that bullshit, how's your life? Mm-hmm. Are you rich? That's real. That's Do you fun. have a boss you have to answer to? Mm-hmm. Do you have a grind that you gotta get up and do every day that you hate because you're not living your dream? Chris Tucker, all in people, Ricky Smiley, Steve, Cedric, they're living their dream while you work for somebody. Yeah. They're yeah, living their dream while you punch a clock. Mm-hmm. While you cheerleading for them, you got their back so hard, protect at all costs. You, it, you, you're so protective of them. You come to my page and you calling me a, a cornball nigga, a this, a that. Is Cat paying your rent? Is he putting your kids to college? Is he putting dinner on your table? Why are you cheerleading for this man so hard? 
How has he changed your life by his mm-hmm. truth? Mm-hmm. Wow, well, did you? But hold on, but uh, but it's almost the same like, okay, so when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, mm. did Will Smith actually come back from all of that like how he did before? Like how he was before he, the slap? Will Smith, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Time heals everything. That's true, but and he hasn't you, been working like he used to. Okay, what does that mean? What he's living out of a out of a no, of a he's not. Box now? No, he's not. <laughs> and he'll be fine. Trust me, he'll be fine. As soon as he does that next movie that kills at the box office, yeah, he's Will Smith again. It it, it, it it's it's ridiculous, you know. Well, I I, I got to ask you about this because you're in Texas now. Um, when did you start having an issue with Lizzo? I got to ask you that. Like, and, I, I never, I never and had why, an You just said something and everybody in the internet just sprung to it? Yeah, uh, I, I never had a, I don't know the woman personally. I've never met her. I don't have an issue with her. I was being a comedian. That's okay, I am. I'm a comedian. What did he say? Well, it was, I made a joke about, made her, a joke. about how she looked and whatnot. You and, know. and then we had Faison on here, and he said something about it. To be honest with you, we were like, yeah. um, you know, why is he talking about fat people? You know, you had lost a little weight, too, then, too. I was yeah. looking at you. Yeah. So it's like you used to be a little bigger, oh, and yeah. you done trimmed down now. Yeah. It's almost like, okay, we got to protect the fat people at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that again, as much as I love social media, kind of, as, as much as it can be a blessing, uh, it is definitely a curse. Because I'm telling you, it gives everybody a platform. I mainly use it for prom- as a promotional tool. Even mm-hmm. tell you what show I got going on. And also, if you do it right, you can make money off of it. You know what I mean? So from a business standpoint, that to me is the greatest gift you can have. But the fact of the matter is, the mass majority of the people on there ain't using it for business. Mm. They don't know how to use it for business. They got no reason to use it for business. So they on there for the likes and the comments. When I post, I don't post to just be posting. I'm posting with a purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm making money. You know what I mean? For the comedy clips that I post, I'm making five figures a month off of Facebook. You know, certain things that I, at the end of every, all of one of my posts, I always go and subscribe to my podcast, blah, 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 blah. Because when I get those numbers up and I use those advertiser dollars for my pocket, I get paid. Right. I I'm not doing shit for likes and comments. I kind of feel like you somewhere here recently started to figure it out even more, like about the monetizations. Just looking at through which, your- which, What I started to figure out was this, and Warren Buffett has a great quote. If you can't control your emotions, you can't control your money. Mm. And I would get into verbal wars with people on on Instagram. Motherfuckers say something to me. Motherfucker, blah, 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 blah. And then those people report you. Your account mm. gets blocked. Now you can't monetize. You've taken yourself out of position to make money because you couldn't control your emotions. Fuck them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. So put your ego away. Ignore shit. Continue to monetize, continue to build, continue continue to, you know, build relationships and make money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Wow. I was going to say something about what you were talking no, about. I slipped I'm, out I'm, I'm going to be real with you. You just, like I said, you come through really in a way to where you educate more when I watch your interviews, to be honest with you. Like, like I didn't know that at first. I'm I know honest. my aggression can be a turn off. Oh, it's, it's crazy. It can go either way. Listen, it can listen, go either listen, way listen. now. I'm, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I'm an Aries. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a man. So I got all of the, the alpha shit that uh, lined up. You know, I'm my zodiac it. sign is Aries. I'm April 3rd. So, you know, we a fiery sign. So between me being an Aries, me being from New York, me being a man, you know, I got all the ingredients in the hostility gumbo. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, but that's just who I am. I, I'm just, you know, I'm that's just who you. I am. I'm sitting back, I, I was sitting back looking at it this morning. I said, boy, this dude right here, he, he got a hell of a punchline and you do know what you're doing. You come from a long line of being on TV and then now standing on that stage, I seen you, I seen you do a few jokes that was hilarious about this one black guy in Houston. I think he had two white girls with him. Yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. Bro, I enjoyed that. I'm like, I'm glad somebody had the camera on this in there. I know they changed to cut that camera off. <laughs> so, like, how is it, like, like when you look at, like, being in stand-up and all these years, the people following you, how much, uh, how, what's crazy or what's confident uh, thing that a thing that has made people really like made you really feel a way about people like when it when it come down to it like your fans something that they done that kind of moved you did they have a tattoo on them of you or, I would or, hope not oh you never know 
You know, I've seen Listen, it. They, they, I seen they, a dude the other day put a dude on his leg. This, this is what I mean when you I know, go, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm not a real big football guy. My, my, my extent of knowledge of football and enjoyment comes from playing Madden. But, but as far <laughs> as like really watching the game, knowing players, knowing plays, I, I, I'm not part of the cult. Right. But, but dudes, they get like the players' names and faces and the team logos tattooed oh, yeah. on them. And, and more importantly, when I look on social media, dudes that get in fights in the stands, I'm going, these players don't know you. They, they a lot of the, a lot of what y'all fight for and this <laughs> tribalism, the sports tribalism, a lot of these same dudes, they go to dinner together. They hang out with each other. They're friends. They don't feel the way about each other that you do about the opposing teammate mm-hmm. and team. Calm the fuck down. And a lot of times, I'm, and again, my dude, listen, because of who I am and what I do, I meet so many people both in sports and entertainment where I go, oh, shit, that's so-and-so. In my mind, I know I'm supposed to know them. I don't expect them to know me. And then they go, Aries Spears, yeah. I'm a fan, bro. Yeah. Now, I'm giddy inside because I'm like, yo, this motherfucker know me. Yeah. Like, my boy is Michael Irvin. And when I used to do the, the, over, yeah. when I used to do the best damn sports show, and Mike was on for like a couple of months, and I didn't I didn't know Mike prior to that. But when we would do the uh, the, the briefings before the taping to discuss what we were going to discuss, man, I was cutting up in that room so hard, Mike would fall out of his chair and be like, "This nigga crazy, man! I know this nigga." So I know Mike, I know Shaq, I know certain players. So, and even then, I'm not. Tattooing your image on my body, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I, I, we dap it up, so I love. But I know them, so they not gonna disrespect me or act a certain way. Where I go, man, if a lot of you dudes who are fighting these niggas in the stands were to meet your favorite player, they probably shit on you. Mm-hmm. They won't give you the love you want. They may not take that picture. They may walk off and treat you like you ain't shit. And you got this nigga's name on your back. And you, you willing to mad die as for this ever. nigga. He might even fuck your girl if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. And you worshiping this nigga? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying all of them are like that. Because I'm sure there's, there's some pretty cool dudes. But I'm telling you, man, I've seen shit where diehard fans be like, yo, so-and-so. And that nigga look down on them like, they ain't shit. You see that? That's got to hurt. You see what happened with, uh, with Chameleon there when he met your boy, Michael Jordan? Jordan yeah. See but what listen, I mean? But listen. It happens. It happens, but uh, listen. You might think because that's Michael Jordan, he got billionaire. Da, 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 da. He might, everybody's susceptible to a bad day. Mm-hmm. He might have gotten a fight with Juanita. I'm like that bitch, and here come Chameleonaire. So you know because I've also and, and and that's why when I've asked people who have known Mike or met Mike, I go, Yo, is he really an asshole? And I've had people go, Man, he is the coolest dude. Really? And I go, Really? But, but that's really everyone, a millionaire but, story. Yeah, that story. But, that's, but what, everybody that's what, says that about him that he's like that. But a lot of people also say he's not like that. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. And, I, and I'm just saying from for me, sometimes you have to meet people at the right time. Right time. Or sometimes people don't approach you the right way. I've had people come up to me and say wild shit to me off the cuff. And it's like, nigga, you don't even know me. You just met me, and that's your first approach. Wow. Now I'm mad. Or I might just not be in a good mood that day. I had a fight with my baby mom. You know what I mean? Now ain't the time. But for the most part, I try to make sure that any time I walk out the door, I put on that right. face. Because you know, when you famous and you hit the public, you kind of belong to the public. And that's how I always felt as a um, consumer of a celebrity's work is the fact that I understand that you're a human and you have bad days and all of that, but you signed up for this. This is what you, so whenever you walk out the door, people are going to come to you. Can I get a picture with you? Can I get your autograph? Can I da da da? And you're supposed to have that great spirit because no matter if you have a bad day, if you had to go on stage to perform, you're going to do what you're supposed to do on stage. So right. why don't you do the same thing in front of your... Fans, because well, these fans I, are going to buy it's, your it's, stuff. It's a little different because when you go on stage, the people that have bought the tickets, they're there. Mm-hmm. They've they've made they've bought them. You, their money is in your pocket. Mm-hmm. When I'm walking down the street, your money ain't in my pocket, so I'm not obligated, uh, you know, to do anything. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. I don't have to do anything. But I'm. But I'm also again. That's why I'm just going. I kind of get it. It's it's comes with the gig when right. you go out into the public. You can't, especially, you know, the, the more famous you are, it's to be expected. Mm-hmm. So you want to try to act accordingly, but you don't technically have to, you know? Right. Well, I got to ask you about, um, and, and you don't have to answer it or you can, because um, <laughs> you have a long history of stuff. Corey Holcomb, 
Um, I seen you name him during Breakfast Club days as your Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. as a, and he's as still one. on it. He's still on and, it. And and like, but you guys kind of over time, people go through stuff. Like, do you think you guys are ever? You know what I mean? I hope so. You see what I'm saying? I, I because so, this, I, I this, love seeing y'all chemistry. But this is what I'm talking about. That. Yeah, you know what I'm this saying? This is what I'm talking about when I say growth. For me to sit here and go, oh, because we had a beef, he's no longer on my mind. That's that's some female shit. That's vaginal uh, reaction. He's still there. It don't change who he is as a comedian. He's still one of the coldest in the game. And yeah, I would love to hopefully one day we could work together because that's part of the growth. If I was to sit here and hold that grudge and go, man, I ain't gonna ever fuck with that nigga. And he might not ever want to fuck with me, and that's fine. But but you know. Again, let's for the betterment. Let's better for the betterment of us, you know. Let let's figure shit out. Yeah, because like I said, you you one of those guys that like I said, you you history. You ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I look at like I talked to I talked to Country Wayne yesterday, but those guys, the newer comedians. I ask this question to everybody, and and I'm not gonna continue to ask it because I seen an issue when I came in the game. Me and Bubba Dub talked this morning too. These internet guys that come in the game the way they're coming in now. Uh, when you look at the Desi Banks, the Marco, the Funny Marcos, all of them, which I deal with the, the, those newer guys, like, and I deal with a lot of the guys that right. come from the going to those uh, comedian halls, like you was in Harlem and really bringing it. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys didn't have to go through that. <coughs> but um, when you see them and you see the way that they're doing things now, how do you embrace it as a comedian that came from that, you know, from that rugged grind? You know, as long as the as long as you have substance and you got staying power. You know, uh, I mean, the landscape has changed. You know, uh, the grind is different because of social media and these platforms. So I don't knock the hustle. Just just stick around. You know, as long as you're putting out quality work and, you, you know, work that has substance and meaning and you stick around, that speaks for itself. Everything else will take care of itself. You know, it, it's, it's so hard to make it in this game. Fuck how you get in. Just get in. Yeah. I don't care if you go through the basement, climb over the roof. Coming through a side window. However, you get there, get there. Wow, you know? and and, and uh, Country Wayne Netflix special. A lot of people. He got some backlash on it. I watched it. I've been to his shows, so I support him. I know that he can bring out uh, people that's fifteen or, or sixteen all the way to to eighty. I seen the, right. the, the crowd response. I seen him set thirty seven hundred people in those seats in Houston when he invited me to the wow. show. And um, you know him and Mike Bless and all us. We hung out. Um, yeah. I know he got it as far as that go. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people say they he got some backlash on What was the backlash? It was the fact of he wasn't good as, you know, some people. You had Janae Sayers saying that that, com that Netflix special wasn't just, you know, on 10. You know what I mean? Oh. So And you're going to get, because all of Did this stuff. Did you see it at all? No, I didn't. Yeah, but all of this stuff is is a, you, you can have your opinion on how it's long with other. Yeah, yeah. It's all subjective. Yeah. So, so, but, He's sitting thirty seven hundred in these seats, and he's doing Netflix hey, specials. Man, he getting hey, money. You know what hey, I'm saying? <laughs> you know, hey, listen, I just I just booked uh, Madison Square Garden, not the big really? theater, no, the Hulu theater, whole okay, five thousand. Okay. Uh, and you know, up until this point, I mainly do comedy clubs. I've done a couple of theaters, but with other people. So would I'm that doing be your this biggest one by one? myself. Would yeah. that, okay, yeah, congratulations. So, Where is this at? Uh, in, in New York. Square Garden. Oh, it's gonna yeah, go. You yeah, that's your yeah. home. So, and when so, is that? Uh, May 18th. May 18th, yeah. so y'all need to go buy yeah. y'all tickets. I'm and like, I'm, 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 I'm fly. He's like, you going? I'm going to fly. I'm going to come up there because you're here. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a different thing with me, bro. I pull yeah. up. You yeah, know and then I'm also at uh, the Wilbur Theater in Boston on yeah. May 14th. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, man, um, it, it's progression, you know. It's all about progression. So uh, as hard as it is to get there, as long as you get there, so what? What about What's the hardest city you've ever had to perform? Oh, Mississippi. Why? What? Yeah, I like niggas that read. <laughs> oh, watch your mouth, man. We're in the South. Your ass is no, down No, no, no. But We're in the South. No, no, no. You're in the South, but not really. <laughs> not really. When we talking about Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. It gets that's, deep. That's slavery South. Oh. <laughs> Some of them niggas just got freed yesterday. <laughs> you be going down there, though. You do shows. I, really, I, I no. You don't go down there? I used to. I, I, I used to. I used to do Stardom in Alabama. I used to do Chuckles in Memphis. Zanies in Nashville, even though I would like to get back to Nashville. But uh, they don't laugh as much at the jokes. It's not or? that they don't laugh. It's just my energy is so East Coast and I'm such a fast talker. I think sometimes 
I don't know that I connect with the South mm. the way. And listen, I've gone to those places and they've told me, hey man, I fuck with you, Mike. You not fucks with your heart, Mike. You my boy, Mike. You know, and they tell me they love me the same way everywhere else, but I just, the connection to me feels off. Uh -huh, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like when you look at certain comics like Arnez J, Bruce Bruce, they kill that market. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think they ha they're able to flow a little bit better than I can in that market. And what's your best market? Of course, LA. I love the East Coast, West East Coast, Coast, Midwest. Just the deep, deep South. I just... And you I, love music, right? Who doesn't? So, okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. There's a big thing that um, I've heard people talk about. They talk about music in the up north compared to music down south that up well north you know they 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 the mecca because he in new york i'm a southerner they they proud as hell i'm gonna tell you that now i, I got but a lot I, of but i, give credit I got with, a lot of friends up there but i give credit where credit is due yeah. man you know listen y'all listen and, to and, a lot of down south music no no, no, they no, hate no, us. They gonna hate us. No, no, no. You no, know the Migos and all that confused well, well, them. No, all of them, all them damn you. cadences but, but let me confused stop the hell out of them boys. Let me stop, let me stop. Go I, ahead. I, I, my man who drew, again drove me down here, my boy Red Rock, we was just listening to Meth and Red in the car. And we old heads. So, you know, prior to what exists today, a la the Migos, listen, everybody had their reign. It started in New York, hip hop born out of the Bronx. You know, Jay-Z, like he said, New York, home of the spitters. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And then the West Coast took it over. And then the South took it over. Yeah. Jeezy, Lil yeah. Wayne, yeah. T.I. Yeah. And I think during that era, very respectable. Very respectable. And some lyricists came out of the South. Andre 3000, T.I., real lyricists. Pimp now, C, today, before that? Today? Let me just say this. I got Migos <laughs> and Future and... I'll almost say it is, is not into listen, that. No, but he just said lyricists. We jam down here. That's why I come PMC said the country rap tune. We looking at a bounce. We looking Scarface. at our face. We face my boy is Willie D. Hey, you bring it up. That's something I'm gonna ask you about too. Willie D just got a lot of flack behind that new interview he did with Cat. I heard with Cat about Williams. the flack. I don't know exactly it's why like he caught he, the flack. He, he came out and said somebody like a, yeah. yesterday or the day before. He was like, you know, they were because they was comparing the two interviews. Shannon Sharp's interview is hard to come behind, but he did that before. S stop right there. Do you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is useless bullshit. <laughs> Giving another black man flat for what? <laughs> when we can do better than that. And that's my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, this is what we are about? I about that, yeah. Come on, man. We got to do better than this. He went in and he, he, he addressed like, it. He yeah, was but like, he this said ain't like right. He had to address it. I'm like, okay, but why even address it then? Just leave it alone. This ain't right. That's what he said. This he is did. what we do. He didn't like the comments. What that nigga say? Man, fuck that nigga. <laughs> that's what we do. You know, listen, my, and my joke was about, we were talking about Migos with Quavos. Uh, I was watching this show called uh, Hustle and Flow on Netflix, mm -hmm. and it's a rap competition yeah, show. Yeah. And each rapper from their region has other rappers from their region judge the contestants. Okay. And I told a story on Vlad. So Atlanta, it was Big Boy, T.I., and Quavo. So T.I. turns to one of the, turns to Quavo in regards to one of the contestants go, hey man, what do you think about that dude? And Quavo felt like he was being put on the spot. So what Quavo said was, what he was trying to say was, well, in English, man, why you gonna quiz me like that? Here's what he said. Man, why you gonna quiz me like that? <laughs> That's that lemon. That's today's hip hop. Man, why you gonna quiz me like that? What do they talk like this? They dialect is different. Now. But certain they parts, they dialect is different. You certain parts you where you go, that's proper, where people proper, in, proper, in the country, got certain parts of the country, it depends and, on where and, you're and, from. And, and when people were going in the comments, man, Aries don't understand. That's just a southern thing. I said, don't regulate that to the south. Ti's from the south. Andre 3000's from the south. Big boy, ludicrous, all from the south. You can understand them just fine. That ain't got nothing to do with southern region. That is fucking ignorance. I don't agree with that. That's that that's why ignorance. their mother could have talked like that. But their mother ignorant. Their mother, well, you can't do that because they ignorance come up. is passed down. It's generational. They, this is something that's in their culture, man. It depends on where you're from. What's point? You got to learn to read. Jamaicans talk different. They cut up our word. I married the one for 27 no, 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 years, no, no, and no, I go no, over no, there. They that, cut those words up. They patois those words. It depends on different. what part you're but, from. But that's How's that different? If you're Jamaican, if you're English, that's not 
messing up words. That's your. That's who you are as a Jamaican. That's your culture. New Orleans do the same thing, bro. Queen me like that. No, but it's, it's not English. English. <laughs> because even in Jamaica, if you're from Kingston compared to if you're from the country areas, the accent is a little bit stronger. It depends on where you're from. But queen me like that and not an accent. <laughs> and just that's it. not an accent. Just stop it. That's fucked up English. <laughs> I gotta get I out of here. Jamaican accent. Give me some Jamaican real quick. Something you it's can say. It's hard for her to do it. But no, do the, like tell me what to say and I'll say. Anything. Just say anything. Like where y'all going? Why? Um, ugh, I hate to be put on. You going? Where you going to the store or something like yeah. that? Say yeah. that. Okay. Um, why don't you? No. <laughs> she was English, man. She been Englishized. You're bad. Um, <laughs> American. Like, why you don't go down the store? Let me let me British accent. British accent. One go on. No, no. British yeah. accent. Uh, a lot of times people that come here and, and, and they won't judge you, but not for a little bit. Now that's okay. an accent. Then that you're not fucking up the language. That's your accent. Queer me like that. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's not an accent. That's that's you fucking up the language. I gotta get him out of that, man. We're gonna get you out of here, but Shannon Sharp becoming a top interview because of this interview has went up past every interview with 40 some million, you know what I mean, right. views. And so, like, it's the second most viewed in, under Joe Rogan, but it, Joe Rogan's gonna pass him. I mean, he's gonna pass he's gonna Joe pass Rogan. Because he's doing it fast. It's, it's yeah. moving. Um, does that set a staple for him, you know, far as being a great interviewer in the field that he's dealing with now? You have, to do, you have to do it more than once. Really? You, you got to keep Joe going. Joe Rogan's been consistent. That's why he got the $100 million deal from Spotify. He damn sure did. So, you know, uh, no no knock to Shannon. That's great. But it, it, you got to be consistent. Can't do it again. You can't just do it once. Do you think he can do it again? Who knows, man? I mean, listen, that, that interview was lightning in a bottle. Uh, and it's hard to capture lightning in a bottle consistently. You know, it depends on who you guess. And Kat was a great guest. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I don't agree with it, but. It's all about chemistry. Yeah. I got to ask you about um, also Jason Whitlock, Stephen A. Smith. You, yes. you, deal, you see what's going on with them boys, man. Yeah. Like um, when you see this kind of, this still the same goes back. It's the same thing. Color for uh, color, you yeah. know, round for round. Like, well, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, you know, I know Jason Whitlock has always had this undertone of being a sellout or being viewed as a, I don't want to say Uncle Tom because a lot of black people don't even know the true meaning of Uncle Tom. When you get called an Uncle Tom, that's actually a compliment. Yeah, that's I've not heard a that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you called a Sambo, now you've been insulted. Yeah, that's but right. An Uncle Tom is actually not a, not a bad thing. But he's been uh, referred to as some sort of a Sambo. So I don't know all the complete details about the Stephen A. thing. I don't either. He just came out. To, some yeah. people say he was coming behind uh, 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 Cat Williams and, and, and Shannon Sharp's interview to let him know, yeah. you know, like, it's pressure over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not being real. Yeah, I just, at the end of the day, I just would like us to do better. I think it's just time. Yeah. You know? Dude, and, and so what are you going to do to change the narrative? Because what are you, what, is, what, what, do. what the hell is Ari Spears going to do to change the narrative? I, because I, I, you've been a, like I told you before, you've been a part of the situation that pretty much spewed up, you know, different things that caused people to feel a way about pressure on this internet with comics. Right. So what are you going to do in 2024 to, to change any, the narrative? Any, anything I can, uh, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm not as, I'm not as powerfully based in certain positions to make the kind of change that I would like to make. Uh, so, you know, my, 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 fit, my uh, platform or my mouthpiece can only do so much. You know, all the other changes that need to happen need to come with me being able to provide or, you know, uh, build some things. So that's going to take, that's going to take a little bit of time for me because my hustle is a little bit different because I'm not, I'm not ahead of the pack like a Cat Williams or a Kevin Hart uh, like that. But it can happen. Well, that's the goal. I'm talking about on a on a dime. That's 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 the goal. You never know. Yeah. See, and when you're talking about stuff like that, you know, because I know Kevin Hart, he talk about the fact that like Cat Williams, he's not really just helping the people around him to grow and so forth. Do you think that is so detrimental, especially when you become a celebrity, you making money, you making moves, that you need to help the people around you come up and create like an organization, like you know how Kevin has? Yeah. Uh, you know, listen. One thing about black people. And, and, and I, you know, and I know we don't like to be held accountable, which is why so many people are mad at me. Because anytime you hold niggas accountable, they go, fuck that, you know. <laughs> uh, but one thing about I love about my people is when we get it together, 
we're, we're the best at so much shit than anybody else. We know how to dominate. We 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 life's hot sauce. You know, if if, mm-hmm. if life is chicken, we do Tabasco. We know how to turn the volume up on everything, uh, and we 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 we're some of the most imitated and copied and stolen from people on the planet. Right. So when you just look at the history of who we are, where we've been, what we've done, life wouldn't be shit without us. We we are such a main ingredient to everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going, man, if we could just get our heads right and utilize our powers and come together, Avengers assemble, it, 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 it would be dangerous. What does it take? First, we gotta change the mindset. We gotta change the mindset. We have such a Scrooge McDuck, mine, 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 I got mine, nigga, get yours. Instead of going, help me get mine. And if you help me get mine, I can help him get his. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you think about all these black celebrities on Instagram, Comedians, actors, can you imagine if if we every time I got something popping, you we it was like an automatic chain. Oh shit, Aries got something popping. I'm reposting his shit, Kevin Hart. Oh shit, Bill Bellamy got something popping. I'm reposting his shit, Cat Williams. If everybody just took care of each other, man, it would be it would be it would be dangerous. I you know the funny thing about that. What what I'm thinking is the fact that like, cause social media is a quick way of how to get it out information out to everybody at one yeah. time right so if you did a video showing that you're helping you know your friends helping that everybody come up you show um unity and organization coming up some people be like you know people always turn the good and make it bad be like oh why he got to put it out there like that it makes it seem like that person couldn't do it you know what i mean and turn people head around that's a mindset yeah yeah that's a mindset <laughs> like and that's the bad part about <laughs> it like kevin yeah. got over 300 million followers yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Whether it's me or whoever. Let's say it was a Desi Banks. If he reposted Desi Banks performing here at this day, at this time. It'd be sold out. You know how many people are going to see that? Mm-hmm. You know, if we did that for each other. Wow. Oh, my God. Impact were powerful. Oh, my God. Yeah. But we don't. Now, I, I, what do you think? Of, and I got to get you out of here, but... P. Diddy, uh, how would he end up on this situation if you had mm. to guess? <laughs> I say if you had to guess. What would you see him at in another two years? Uh, you know, he should, you know how I put that? Like, in two years, where do you see P. Diddy? You know, he should just come Is he going to be all right? I said in two years. Take two years. With Spirit time? Aries, like how you said earlier with the comedians. Now, you get on my podcast two years Listen, from now. If, if, he don't, if, if he ain't facing no criminal charges and don't get arrested or nothing like that, he still got the money, so he gonna still do what he do. He gonna be who he is. And if he get arrested, you think they gonna throw the book at him? You know, money money talks. You know, R. Kelly, R. Kelly had money, and he's out, isn't he? <laughs> isn't he out? No, he's still in jail. Yes. R. Kelly is not out. I thought he was released. Where, he wasn't released. Where you hear that from? I think you tripping. Are you sure? Really, man? R. You Kelly, tripping. If R. Kelly came out, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. No, I thought R. Kelly. If was R. Kelly released. was out. But it'll go crazy. It'll go crazy. You know he got followed. You know, I seen you I seen you do a sketch on that too. You were early. Kelly you was early, early on that nigga. You, you <laughs> were early. I said this nigga was early. Hell, man. R. Kelly is not out. Oh, I thought he was out. He would have been performing already. Mm, okay. Now he is not out. I thought I don't know where I got that from. That's why I was like, he got money, but they threw the book at him and they is not letting him out. No, and they ain't playing with him either. Yeah, but at all. Know, he also was like really wilding. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you. I see your skit. It's P Diddy. P Diddy is being said to have fucked with grown women, right? Mm. And men. I mean, it's a lot going on. It's a lot. You're, I'm just telling you what's going. On. The internet is talking. Maybe he'll be honest and come out and just come out. <laughs> Maybe he'll be honest in two years. You know. Two years from now, you're honest, and it, that's wild. I don't. And even if know he how did that come out and say it and admit it, then what would happen? Do you think everybody turn their backs on him and he would just... No, because he got money. So money is the cure to everything. For people that need to be cured. (laughs) Real talk. Spearsburg pod. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I want to talk about where it's at now. I seen two years, three years ago. Yeah. Y'all been getting it in. How did you even come together with this guy? I don't know who he Uh, is. He opened for me uh, one day and, uh, and then one day turned into another day and another day. And then finally he was like, yo, man, do you need an opener? Can I come out on the road with you? And I was like, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> we just started uh, w- working together on the road. And then one day he said, we should do a pod. 
and we did one, and, wow. and, and here we are. I like it. I like it. So what are you guys going to do this year that y'all didn't do uh, last year or did well, to change know, the narrative? We, we, we always try to uh, evolve Mix and figure up. out how to get better. You know, I, I feel like, it, 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 you know, evolution never stops. Mm -hmm. And the goal to get better is always constantly in motion. So no matter how good we may have been two years ago, I'm like, how much better can we be two years from now? Exactly. So just always trying to figure that out and grow and get better. Uh, yeah. I like well, it. Who is the best <clears throat> new comedian stand up that you see coming up? You're talking up, up and coming? Up and coming comedian that you love his comedy. You know, honestly, I, I, I don't really watch uh, too many up and coming cats. I just don't. I'm, 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 I'm 48. I'm stuck in my old ways. I like who I like. Uh, my, my, you know, Dave Chappelle to me is the GOAT. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of today. I mean, Richard is the overall, but right. today. Uh, so you're still in your generation. That's yeah, all the your generation. Great Patrice O'Neill yeah. mm -hmm. was yeah, a I've monster. Uh, yeah. Bill Burr, I'm a huge Bill Burr fan. I, I love Tommy Davidson. And again, I, I, I love Corey. Uh, but yeah, as far as new up, I, I just don't. You know in your I mean? audience, the people that come out and see you, um, do you have a lot of any young people come out and watch your show? As young as in I watched you on Mad and now I'm in my 20s and 30s. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I, but like young, young, I don't even really like like, like 20s, I, I don't, early I don't 20s. do colleges right. for a, for the reason that a lot of comedians don't like doing colleges. Why? Young people don't know shit. They don't know shit and they so moist in the ass that everything is offensive to them. Everything is a reason to cancel you. You know, I, I come from the days when you could smoke cigarettes in clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like I like grown folks, mm -hmm. people that got scars. You know what I mean? These young kids is like, ugh. <laughs> you got kids? Yeah, three. How old is your oldest? 24. Oh, okay, so you definitely understand those yeah, age groups. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, listen yeah. to Scarlett? Who? <laughs> Scarlett, she's in New no. York. She's a young rapper. No. See, who is the, who is your favorite uh, rapper of all times? We do a top three. <laughs> I do a top three here. My top three is uh, Nas, Jay Z, and Jadakiss. That Jadakiss, the hardest one you out of you just named. I, I oh, met him. Oh, come on, Nas. Yeah. I, I said what I said. Nas is I said a beast. what I said. I, I, if I'm gonna deal with New York. Uh, Jada Kiss, you seen what happened on that verse. Stop playing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You Jada's already a know. You Jada's already a know. Monster. When it comes down to you lyrical, you know what it is. I get it. I get it. Nas but female wise, who's the best one out there? I said Scarlett, but he didn't even listen to the no, young. No, that's new young. Ones. I don't even you listen mean to from, those. From, MC Light. Ever. Yeah. I would say ever MC Light. I didn't say it. Yo, know, she's the best to ever do this as I a female. Go with MC Light. Yeah. Because Why? everybody else, like Little Kim and Foxy Brown, ugh. Lauren Hill. Yeah, but Lauren only did one album. Even though that album is beyond classic and amazing, she only gave us the one. Uh, but Lauren seemed like she in her own headspace. Mm -hmm. And she got certain, I don't want to use the word issues, but you know what I mean? Right. Seems like something's going on, you know. When she, you when you first, and I don't mean to cut you, but when you first, I don't want you to get out of here without me asking this. In four, you were 14, 15, 16 growing up uh, in New York. When you first heard hip hop, man, how was that for you? I gotta ask you that. Oh, it was you know it was Run DMC, yeah, yeah, uh, Fat Boys, MC Shan, MC Shan, uh, uh, D Nice, D Nice, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, Cool Hurts, Cool Hurts. Oh, I'm just, uh, you're making that. Kumo, I knew you were Kumo gonna say D. it. Yeah, no, I, I'm not Kumo D. Uh, Curtis Blow, Kumo D too. Yeah, though. Curtis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Kurt, uh, but Curtis Blow, Curtis Blow. Heavy D. EPMD, yeah, Eric Sermon, yeah, stop yeah, playing, yeah. man. Rock him, the, the, the goat. Yeah, <laughs> he was kind of his time. <laughs> Nigga, the, Big Daddy Kane. Without him, you don't see these these lyrical uh, people the way you see yeah. them. Uh, Rock him was the one that pretty oh, much yeah, was the yeah, first yeah. one that kind of started and, that. And that's what I mean when I say like I remember I was walking down the street one day in New York, and I'm about to cross the street and I go, oh shit, that's Rock Kim. You seen him? And when I walked up and I was like, yo man, I just wanted. He was like, yo God. You that nigga, God. I was like, yeah. He, like, he rocked he, with he, you. He knew who I was. And, 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 and again, Nas, my, my favorite. I remember I was at the L.A. Laugh Factory. And I walked in and I went straight to the balcony. And Khalees was there. And this is when she was married to Nas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Khalees, I just want to tell you, yo, your husband is the shit. She stopped me. She was like, he downstairs. He loves you. So I go downstairs and Nas is in the corner Averick's jacket, shades, got a little henny. I said, yo, Nas, man, I, 
Yo, what's up, God? Yo, I fucks with you, God. Yo, you be doing your thing, kid. I was like, oh, I kept my cool. <laughs> then I went outside and called my niggas. <laughs> like, Yo! Let's go! <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, man. It's like, because I'm in the game, even if you're not necessarily a comedian, we right. in the entertainment game. Right. So, and we fans of what we do. Yeah. But if a regular Joe go up to Nas, and I don't think Nas would because that's not his character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But some rappers, your favorite athlete, they might shit on you. Mm-hmm. And then your whole, oop, 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 oop. That's why I'm like, hold on. How, how did you feel about the Nas and Jay Z when that thing came together and everybody? Oh, he destroyed Jay Z. And that you, Ethan, you, he destroyed Jay Z. I agree. I can't even sit there and oh, play he with destroyed you. Jay-Z. I, I can't even play. Now, that's a dude who I met three times, and the first two times he was so rude to me. Jay Z? Yeah. What Jay Z do? I just, you know, I, I remember I did an interview. I had to interview Tamia. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I met this little uh, restaurant in Beverly Hills, and Jay Z walked in. And I was like, yo, Jay, man, I'm a fan. He didn't even look at me. What? He didn't even look at me. He just went straight to talking to Tamiya. And then there was another time. What I did kinda, you say? He, you were younger? Yeah, he didn't older. say nothing I, else. I didn't say nothing. I just, you know, I was like, You just hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but now the third time I met him, you said now same I'm, thing. I'm Aerie Spears. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So I wasn't really famous okay, I get, then. I get it now. So uh, I went to the uh, Mayweather Pacquiao fight in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So uh, the fight's over and everybody's spilling out out of the arena into the parking lot. So the celebrities is mixing with the regular folks as they walk into their cars or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, Allen Iverson was right here. And all these people were, hey, I, hey, I, hey. And then Beyonce and Jay-Z merge a little couple steps ahead of them holding hands. Niggas forgot who AI was. <laughs> <laughs> they all ran to Jay-Z, Beyonce. And it just so happened that as they were walking, I kind of merged at the same time. And I said, yo, Hove, man, I just want to tell you. He said, he looked at me and went, I know who you are, nigga. I know who you are. <laughs> he didn't want to deal with you. Yeah, yeah. Because of all the jokes I've made on yeah, him. Yeah. He acknowledged, like, nigga, I seen you fuck with me. I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, so it was a little bit of a, that was some get back for why me. You, why, wow. What made you tell in to Jay-Z like that? Was it because you had met him a few times? And, I'm or a, you just I, intrigued I, 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 by I'm a fan. I'm yeah. a huge whole fan. I mean, the nigga lyrically got bars. What's your favorite song? Uh, I, you know, I don't know that I have a favorite song. There's so many. Or a uh, verse that touched you. Give uh, me a verse. You know that from the, uh, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Boom. I go up to that every time I oh, okay. go on stage. That's hard. That's my intro. That's music. hard. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the way that allow me to reintroduce my, and then the boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah, it brings oh, that energy. That, that's just, yeah. So uh, let's talk about where you're at tonight. You you at the, because uh, I'm, I'm dropping but before, this. But before you say oh, that, before okay. you say that, so who is the first um, down south rapper that you ever heard that you liked? They had respect for. Scarface. No, I can answer that for you. I ain't got it. I can answer this question for you. You don't know. It ain't Scarface. No. You know who I used to? I used to love that one song by Ti. Bring them out. Bring them out. That's called because of what you do. Because of what you do. Because what's the name? Producer DMX Nim producer. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. The 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 producer for Swiss Beats. Yeah, that's who produced that. Yeah, but it wasn't because of the beat. Lyrically, that shit. New York. Ti was Ti spit lyrics on that. He definitely spit lyrics on it. But it's a it's a the producing and the way that thing hit. But I mean, that's part of it. It, you That's can hear of it. the DMX and all that stuff coming at you. You don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, listen. The, the beat go with the. If, if you're a great rapper, yeah. the, 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 the rhyme scheme and pattern is supposed to be married with the beat. I get it. I get it. You know, I'm, I'm Pimp C all day. You know, no matter what. And he killed J and them on that. Uh, 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 what's that song? He, they, they all try to give, like, Jay brought him out during that time. Pimp C could never kill what, what was that? What was that song? I don't even know the name uh, of the, the song. song. What was it? The one where they was on the on the boat. I know the song. Big Pimpin. Big Pimpin. Oh, get out of here. Man, I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to play with you on Boss Talk about oh, PMC. You in the it. South. You is in the it. South. 
Yeah, you had that song. Listen, he what? had the hardest what? eight bars Them on that bars? song. No way. Eight bars. That's no all you. No way. Eight bars. Shout out to Pimp C. You know I'm going to hold you down. I'm going to hold you down every time. But I'm telling you right now, <laughs> when he said what you know about them Texas boys, that's all he had to say. I'm from Texas. He won all Listen, one of my favorite songs to this day is uh, uh, Ghetto Boys. Don't do the no. How you got to love it? You in the South. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. When you heard that one, you know you like them boys. I can't lie. I can't yeah. lie. Yeah, I can't yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, they again, proud. I, I don't, they I don't, proud. Listen, I don't associate Houston as the South. What you mean? I know it is technically, but but what y'all, you mean? You no, know, y'all don't have that twang that the real South. Man, like, y'all are so. Listen, Dallas depends on what part of Texas Houston you go to. Is so metropolitan and so big. It it's don't huge. feel like the South. When I say the see. South, like Mississippi, you don't have Georgia, a bad experience in Mississippi. Alabama. <laughs> no, I'm so <still laughs> talking. To Man, like they, they are, they are this far removed from there are certain, move. But there's certain parts of Texas that when you go, you're not going to understand not one word they're saying. Listen, I've been to Beaumont. I've been to Odessa. Yeah, San Antonio. I love San Antonio. San Antonio is nice. Let right. me tell you some San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, of all the Texas, yeah. my Austin. three favorite. Yeah, but Austin, Austin. I like Austin. Yeah. But they're big cities. It don't feel like the South. It don't feel like the South to me. It's so commercialized. Nah. When I go to in Mississippi, and hey, we know Mississippi again. They did South Texas spirit down there. I, I, I feel like I feel like yo, I, I'm in the South. <laughs> the way they move, the the, the, the flow. I, just, I know I'm in the South. I be down there too. I go through Mississippi. When I walk to. through there and I see. I put my head down. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you Do you don't. eat the food down there? You ever try the food? Food is great. Food is great. Yeah. Food is great. Let me let me tell you something. And this is why I say this. And I, and, I, and I'm, I'm and I do this in my stand up. I've been doing stand-up for 33 years. I've been everywhere. I know. There's not a place on this map I haven't been. Like, like when you go to Miami or you go to a club in New York, D.C., L.A., and it's packed where you could barely move, 90% of the women in there are bad. You yeah. got a couple ugly bitches here. And there. Yeah, yeah. I went to a club in Mississippi that was packed. 100% of them bitches horrible looking. There was not one bad bitch in there. All of them looked like <laughs> Medea. <laughs> I've never been somewhere where there was not one bad bitch there. Them was hideous. <laughs> hideous. <laughs> Man, I'm just I'm, I'm just glad you get. I right, listen. D- Texas got you. You got a lot of love for coming. You yeah, will absolutely. Be back in I, I, listen, I, man. I'm telling you, some of the best I've ever had came out of Dallas. <laughs> and you haven't moved here yet. I'm, I'm telling my man. I'm talking about getting a piece of property. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. Dallas. I love H Town. H Town is dope. San Antonio was dope. You know, especially if you like Hispanic women too. You know, the Mexicans, but. No man, let's talk. The South. Now. I gotta talk about that the, the, the show tonight. Like like uh, you at the uh, Addison uh, Improv. Yeah, man. So so how's it, how's the flow being? How's the, the how's Great. the love? Great. All, all the shows have been sold out. We added a late la- a late show, third show today Saturday. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I always have a good time here. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm in Addison and Arlington. So mm-hmm. I'm here. Yeah. I'm in Dallas twice a year, mm-hmm. and then I hit Houston, and then I hit San Antonio and Austin. Wow, man. That's so love. where are you going to next after this? Where am I next? Jesus. Oh, God, I don't even know. I, I got to look at my schedule. But they can find your schedule online? Of yeah, course. yeah, aerispears.com. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. man, thank you so much for coming on the show, All man. of and check out the podcast, Spears and Steinberg. Yeah! Available on all streaming platforms. Slide in my DMs on Instagram. I'll send you the links, chop it up with you. Also, my YouTube channel, Spearsburg Pod. Hit like and subscribe. Man, I, 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 we love you, bro. Thank you so oh, much. Love, baby. Man, hey, every time he come to town, he can't come to Texas now. He got to check in like the little boys <laughs> on the West Coast do. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much for coming on the show, oh, man. Love, we love brother. you, bro. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Why the bosses talk. And we out.